Hello and welcome to Mostly Vintage Cameras. I should like to start this video by wishing you all a happy summer solstice or a merry summer solstice or whatever the correct uh, greeting is for this occasion. Uh, the solstice is when the sun reaches its northernmost point from the celestial equator. Uh, so it does vary a little bit day to day. Uh, in 2023 it's on June 21st at 3.57pm. So 3.57 in the afternoon is when the sun will be at its northernmost point in the sky. Or more accurately, the northernmost point from the celestial equator. Now this is a soda can. Regular viewers of this channel and thank you so much if you are, you may recall that I did a video at the photography show back in September where they had an analogue spotlight area and I was very enamoured with this product and this company called Solar Can. So this is, I'm sorry to say, another new product on mostly vintage cameras. Maybe should change the uh, name of the uh, channel at this point, but that's another story. So what do we have exactly? Well, as you can see, there's an illustration on the front that pretty much gives the game away as to what a Solar Can is. It's a ready-to-use solography camera, or solography however you wish to pronounce it. And what this means, well we can see the instructions here, bolt your camera to uh, a drain pipe, uh, leave it for as long as you wish, weeks, months, uh, even a year, and then you take out your uh, latent image, there's a, a photographic sheet of paper in here, and then uh, scan it and uh, invert the colours. So what we're doing with this is tracing the path of the sun. So it rises in the east, sets in the west, and in the summer of course it gets higher in the sky, so why the days are longer, that's why it's brighter and sunnier and warmer. And then in the winter, of course, it gets slower. Now, there's another day, which is the winter equinox, where the days are much shorter. It's the shortest day sometimes, it's called. My intention is to put this up for the from the summer solstice to the winter equinox. So I'm going to run this for three months. Um, although Soda can say the optimal time is six months, because obviously in six months you'll get the sun at its lowest in the sky and at its highest. It just traces a line in the sky and then each once it comes towards winter it gets lower and lower. But let's undo the box. This was uh, shipped incidentally, there we go, in um, quite a nice piece of recycle. Oh, there we go. This is the whole retail carton was wrapped up in this uh, recycled and I presume recyclable uh, card dunnage. So there's our solar can, and that's the sticker, effectively the shutter. And I can just see a tiny pimple on it, which is where the uh, pinhole is. So this is a pinhole camera. Various instructions on the camera. Although it's pretty obvious, I do like this uh, logo that uh, emulates the path, uh, the path of the sun over a, a period of months. One, two, three, four, five. You see, they only did the logo for five months. They should have done it for six. We also have inside, uh, I don't know if this is an instruction book as such, your handy soda can instruction booklet. This is the instruction book. Issue 9. And my understanding, which may be wrong, is that as you order a soda can at different times of year, they supply a slightly different version of the instruction book with different illustrations in. Uh, the world's simplest camera, setting up your soda can, science behind your soda can, pictures from the community, page 8 and 9, connecting your soda can, developing your soda can, tips and tricks. You don't technically develop it, it's a latent image. If you were to put it in developer, it would, having been exposed for several months, come out black. You um, don't develop it, you, you slap it onto a flatbed scanner and scan it and get a digital file uh, to preserve it. Of course you don't have to do that, you can just look at it for a few minutes uh, and marvel as it disintegrates in front of you. The great thing about these um, images is they're completely unique, every one, and completely temporary. Uh, they will, if you've uh, left, left the paper out in the light, simply disappear. So we can see a simple explanation of how the soda can works. It is a pinhole camera, so inside the can is a sheet of sensitised paper. I believe it's Ilford multi-grade paper? It's a 5x7 sheet of Ilford printing paper at any rate. And there's some examples from the community, as it says. There is also somewhere, here we go, two cable ties, which say on them, Science experiment, 
do not touch. And incidentally, if you buy one of these as a gift to somebody, makes a great gift, uh, they're about 16, 17 pounds, and, but before you hand it over to them, you decide you want to take a look at what you've bought, you take it all out of the box. The trick for getting it back in the box, I believe, is to wrap this up, wrap that up, and instead of putting this in there, I think what they do when they make these is they put the whole thing in the lid first and then effectively put the box on the lid. Not done such a great job of doing that. So there you go. You can repackage these as uh, if you uh, don't want to use it immediately upon receiving it or buying it. So the, the cable ties incidentally, uh, if it weren't immediately obvious. Cool, chunky cable ties. Look at that. They wrap around the whole thing. So when you put it on your uh, drain pipe or whatever you're going to put it on, that's what secures them in place, two of these. Uh, and when you do that, do read the instructions, but my understanding is you want this to face in a southerly direction at this time of year, which is June, south easterly a little bit, or possibly southwesterly, depending whether you want to catch it at the sun rising or setting. Anyway, that's been the soda can. Hopefully, in September, I'll be making another video where I'll show you the results. Now, as I've said, this is a very simple pinhole camera, and that led me to wonder if perhaps I could just make a pinhole camera and see how tricky it would be to do. To be honest, I used to make pinhole cameras when I was a schoolboy. It's not difficult at all to do a simple pinhole camera. But as luck would have it, I happen to have some of these lying around that some people might recognise as a beer can. I'm not quite sure where they all came from, but I had a few um, available. A few empty ones. So my plan was to do something like this. To cut the lid off, like that, uh, I put some black tape over the back of this and then in a dark room or a changing bag I'm going to slide in a sheet of printing paper, put a bit of tin foil over the top there put that back on, obviously I don't have the clever crimping device you need to seal that and then with the black cloth cap my plan was to pop that over the top of the whole thing and uh, compare and contrast with the commercially made one and that the tin foil has annoyingly stuck, there we go um, great plan, only slight uh, handicap being <laughs> I can't find my box of printing paper uh, now, I'm not suggesting you make a, uh, your own, well, I am suggesting you make your own in actual fact, but I'm not suggesting you make one instead of trying the soda can, because if you make one, you can do some little experiments, you can try and make the pinhole a little bit bigger, uh, or a little bit smaller than the commercially made one, that I believe is 0.4 of a millimetre. You could even try having two or multiple pinholes in it and see what happens there. And if you do put some paper in here and put a pinhole in, and you do have developer, then you can take regular pictures with it as well. However, without any sensitive material to put in there, I can't. So hopefully we will revisit this on another occasion. Thank you for watching, I do appreciate it. All the best.